You shouldn't <laughs> swim round Aphrodite's rock because if you do, you'll be pregnant. <laughs> You'd, you'd advise against that. Would you? <laughs> I would. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Nightfall Drives. Doug and Kath here, and in Jordan's in Cyprus. <laughs> We've got some exciting stuff lined up today, thanks to Steve, the chairman of the Paphos Classic Vehicle Club. And we're going to be experiencing a few genuinely unique and rare cars. So we're just heading across to Paphos. And we're um, unfortunately just in a, we're in a Kia Rio <laughs> hire car. It's unique. <laughs> Uniquely underpowered. It's probably the most underpowered car I've had since my first car. Yeah. 0.9 litre Peugeot 205 <laughs> uh, but yeah it got us up the hill yesterday but uh, <laughs> um, if I was a proper YouTuber maybe I'd be saying uh, for the week Jeff has sorted me out in his Lamborghini Aventador <laughs> uh, but no um, anyway it's not really about about us as usual today it's about uh, sharing the stories of some owners of, of classic cars and um, I'm going to this will be like a the story of the day but then we should get some own stories out of it as well so have a look at the playlists and uh, the channel and uh, yeah see what we get up to today Cyprus is the beating heart of the classic scene in Europe and uh, there's a very very vibrant classic car scene in Cyprus there are many clubs and seven of them are part of the National Cyprus Federation of Classic Vehicles yeah I mean when I when I booked this trip it was for good cast birthdays you know and uh, um, I didn't really know anything about the the classic scene in, in Cyprus at all, but I was very um, happy to to find yourself, Steve, and, um, and yeah. to find out it's actually a very very vibrant uh, scene. Yeah, there's loads going on. Isn't With lot, yeah, there's lots going on, and there's uh, a lot of very quite young Cypriots that are very very uh, enthusiastic about rallying, classic rallying, yeah. which is great. So we do a lot of classic rallies in Cyprus, many many rallies during the summer, yeah. and uh, there's lots going on. Yeah, so it's yeah. uh, and, uh, there's also a big big car event um, on the 26th on the, of April. We're having a yeah. massive uh, classic car show at the wonderful medieval castle at uh, Paphos Harbour. And two weeks before that, there is a charity rally coming from Limassol into Paphos, and it's a 48-hour rally to raise money for the Cyprus Anti-Cancer Society. So there's plenty of things going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Um, been a treat to um, to be you know part of the club for the day. And, well, you uh, are. About <laughs> you are members for the day. Enjoy your t-shirts and uh, thank you very let's much. Let's enjoy it. It's well. been uh, yeah, such a, such a warm welcome. Very 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 grateful. Um, a lot well. of a lot of people forget that what we're here to do is enjoy our classic vehicles. Yeah, precisely. And um, well, thank, thanks to yourself and the club. We're we're going to hopefully well this 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 is kind of the story of the day. We're we're going to go for a drive down down the coast road. Ah, right. So, the, and, uh, yeah, we're going to go down the famous B6 yeah. and we're going to go to Aphrodite's Rock and we're going to be able to have fabulous views. In my view, it's a world-class road and uh, if you're not impressed with it, I'm going to be surprised. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to it. Well, we, <laughs> along the way, we're going to be experiencing a few different 
members cars and I'll be releasing separate videos for those so please please check out the playlist and the, the channel for for those we'll go into a bit more depth about uh, Steve's Cresta as well and uh, some of the others in the, in the club uh, but yeah otherwise we're just enjoying a lovely drive along the, along the coast and I think when we get to Aphrodisi's Rock you're going to get a bit of a history lecture <laughs> about Aphrodisi's Rock so that'll be good yes yeah that's been promised yeah I don't just think you should that, you shouldn't <laughs> swim round Aphrodisi's Rock because if you do you'll be pregnant <laughs> You'd, you'd advise against that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> a lot of people do it. It's, and even to, it, yeah. one thing about Cyprus is the water's never c cold, so yeah. people will be probably there today swimming. Yeah, we did uh, dip our toes yesterday actually. It, yeah. I think the water never gets below about 19 degrees. Yeah, yeah. It's quite uh, well. We're, we're in um, late February now. And uh, it's tw 20, 21 today, something yes, like that. Yes. So, this um, is typical February day. Yeah, yeah. A bit cloudy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose particularly over the, over the mountains, but we did see a lovely waterfall yesterday. Um, ah. A bit of a hike around there. So, yeah, so the, these rallies, um, the, the roads in Cyprus are generally pretty good aren't they and there's but then there's also some some gravel roads i imagine that there's always some gravel roads in a rally but the the roads are generally very good and uh the rallies are a lot of fun and the, what they do is they enable you to see parts of cyprus that you wouldn't see they always yeah. take you to different places that are a bit obscure to villages that uh the villages are lovely here you know if you get into the villages the hospitality and you get you get the real Cyprus, the old Cyprus. Yeah. And, and the villages are lovely. Yeah, that's that's where we're we're staying somewhere that's pretty small, uh, has a, a restaurant and a cafe and, that, and that's about it. Yeah. And a little shop and uh, yeah, it's a very nice sort of rustic village. And what some people there's a couple of things about Cyprus that some people may not understand and one is they drive on the left yeah. and all the signs are in English. Most Cypriots will speak to you in English. And there's petrol stations on every corner. <laughs> have you noticed that? I have actually, yeah. And it's, it's uh, one one thirty something euros a litre. It's not. It, it's, it's, no, uh, it, I think it's about ten percent cheaper than the UK. It, yeah, it's, usually. it's a pretty good value. So, yeah. it, it, um, it is a very a very good place to to preserve preserve and, and run a classic car. It's a great place, it. and this particular Cresta was uh, built in 1966. And in, in the UK, these cars were rusty when they came out of the factories. Yeah. And so there are very, very few Crestas that have survived. Yeah. But this one was sold, it was registered new in Cyprus, and it's spent all its time in Cyprus. Yeah. And we found this, it was advertised on Bazaraki, the uh, car sales um, uh, portal. And we... Uh, it had been under a cover for nine years and it was in a pretty terrible state. All the brakes were seized. Uh, the engine was uh, seized up really, it wouldn't go. And there was no coolant in it, of course. So we've recommissioned it with the help from my friend, Peter, who is an absolute wizard. I call him the car wizard. Yeah. And uh, so we've got a really smooth running Cresta, but there's lots of work still to do. Don't worry about the brakes, I've put new calipers <laughs> and pads I on I can it. feel them working. So. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, but you only so, have yeah. single circuit brakes on these cars. Oh, yeah. And on my Vauxhall Victor, I had a compl I used to have a Vauxhall Victor, which is why I bought this car. Mm. I, I was pining for a 60s car with a column change and bent seats. Yeah. And uh, I had a complete brake failure on my <laughs> Vauxhall Victor. Oh, uh, no. One of the brake pipes burst. And, oh, no. uh, Hopefully not, in a, not at the worst no. time. Yeah. Here, this place is called Euroskipu, and there's a beautiful square here that's all marble. And we do yeah. rallies from here. Oh, yeah. We all gather in the square. Mm. Yeah, so a, a few, and um, there's quite a few places to, to use as venues. There's a lot of places, yes. Yeah, and as you were saying, it's um, a great place to 
to restore, well, to, to, to keep a British uh, historic car and, and oh, to right. look after them, I guess, because of the, uh, obviously, no salt. And right. is, there, is there anything else you have to worry about, about sun damage or...? Yes, there's a lot to worry about. Yeah. But first, let me tell you, the yeah. history of the island is that the Brits have been here for a long time. So there are a lot of things, uh, such as Land Rovers, hmm. that the army are left behind. There's an awful lot of those, and there's a lot of Land Rovers in the club. There's also a massive air-cooled VW club on this island, mm. and uh, they, they are, there's hundreds of uh, VWs that you wouldn't believe. And, yeah, I uh, saw one this morning, actually. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. well, there's camper vans, there's all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. And uh, there's even cobble wagons, I don't know if you know, and the other name for a cobble wagon is uh, a thing, and that was uh, a kind of the uh, German Jeep based on the Volkswagen. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, I, I, uh, I was signing a fever card for one of them yesterday, um, and it looked very nice. Yeah, so, so the, um, the fever cards are um, they're, they're the accreditation of a historic vehicle in, in Europe, is it? No, it's it worldwide. It worldwide, yeah. And the fever card enables people, for instance, if you have, say, a 1940s Maserati or something, and you want to enter the Millimilia or some of the other um, classic events, you must have a fever card. Yeah, yeah. So, with certain cars, and it's only certain cars, a fever card can add massively to its value because a lot of these collectors who collect the uh, very exotic cars, and I see quite a lot of them, um, they they travel around the world. They send the cars to different places, such as Italy, or to America, Pebble Beach, or wherever, and uh, and then they follow on, and they have teams of mechanics that look after them. And some of these cars, I was looking at a, a Maserati the other day, and it was uh, one of only about, how oh, possibly 80 ever made. And uh, it sold recently for $3.3 million. Oh. <laughs> and so a fever card for that car would make a massive difference. So yeah, if for yeah. some reason fever won't issue a card, <laughs> you can imagine it's, uh, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. But it, here, here, the road tax, on uh, after 30 years, you can get reduced road tax, but you must um, have a fever card, which yeah. is why we issue so many fever cards uh, okay, here. Yeah. yeah, 30 years isn't bad, actually, is it? I think it's 40 in the UK for... Yeah, but it's free then in the UK, uh, isn't it? Yes, yeah. But here, um, yeah, you get a reduction here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of people want to have fever cards for things that um, <laughs> are arguable. Because <laughs> the idea of a fever card is it has to be 30 years old, it has to be preserved in a good state, it has to have its original uh, drivetrain, etc. Yeah. And. Yeah. Uh, and it must uh, be not used every day. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I suppose they're trying to, um, you know, if somebody's got a, a Fiat Panda or something. <laughs> yeah, well, they do, they, they, here, they do, oh, yeah. uh, they do yeah. want them. Do you have to have all the, the history documents as well to back it up, I guess, or is it? History documents make a big difference. Yeah. Um, you don't need the history documents to get a fever car, but I would say, and as a car person, you'll know this. It's all about the provenance. It's all about the history of the car. And if you talk to any car enthusiast, they will tell you why that vehicle's important to them. And this car's important to me because I had the Vauxhall Victor yeah. when I was uh, only you know, in my twenties yeah. with a column change and the bench seats. And so this car appealed to me because of that. But this is a much bigger car than the Vauxhall Victor. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's always a story, or maybe your father had one, or your grandfather, or, or in your case, <laughs> or whatever. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, but that's a lot of people, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, that's okay, yeah. I think the, yeah, the history, that's part of the reason I do the channel, is to record the stories of uh, you know, why, the, why these cars are important. It's and, all about the history. That's yeah. the important thing with cars. And I, t I try to explain to the members of Paphos Classic Vehicle Club, of which, I, as you know, I'm the chairman, I try to explain to them that by doing the rallies, that by participating in events, 
not only do they enjoy themselves, but they add to the history and provenance of the car. Yeah. And I think that's very, 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 very important. Absolutely. I'm just trying to get our ducks in a row, yeah. which I think we've got. Yeah. But I think that if people are looking for an interesting holiday and they don't particularly want a beach holiday, you can come at any time of the year here and generally the weather's good. So it's, it's not always good, we do have a few storms, but there's lots going on and if you're a classic car person, um, there's lots of, you know, if people contact me at the Paphos Classic Vehicle Club, um, you know, we have a good website that's just being updated now and uh, if, uh, if we know you're coming, we'll give you a great welcome and we'll... Uh, yeah. Well, you can be an honorary member, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll look after you as we well, as we're doing with you. Fantastic! Yeah, I mean, I, I can vouch for that. I, I was blown away by um, your your warm response. It's, yeah. um, it's been, and this is good, you know a highlight of the holiday already. Just well. uh, being part of the convoy. This is Terry, who's uh, lived in Cyprus for a long time. Would you like to say a few words about Aphrodite's Rock? Okay. Hello, everybody. And uh, those who don't know about Cyprus, Aphrodite is the uh, goddess of love. She's known as Venus in Roman mythology. And um, she was worshipped as a goddess of war as well, particularly in Sparta and Thebes. Also, prostitutes um, often considered her their patron. Um, the name is thought to derive from the Greek word meaning foam. Cypriot legend has it that Aphrodite rose out of the sea off the south coast of Cyprus, right behind me, and she was enveloped in white foam. And this was produced by the severed genitals of Uranus <laughs> after his son Kronos threw them into the sea. <laughs> so that is why she is called Aphrodite. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> In 1956, a guy was sent out to get some cat food from Royal Joyce in the car, and he hit a cow. Oh, God. It's a lovely car, I, I love it, and I, as far as I'm aware, it's the only uh, operating, moving um, Ford Zephyr in Cyprus at the moment. Don't 
the main reason he gave me a lift home was because he was in love with the barmaid at my local pub. <laughs> and he used to visit, use, take giving me a lift as an excuse to call <laughs> into the pub to see his sweetheart. <laughs> Well, that brings to an end our day with the Paphos Classic Vehicle Club. Uh, what a day. Um, thanks so much to Steve, the chairman, for uh, the warm welcome, the reception, and uh, arranging the day. Uh, thanks to, to Paul, to Joan, uh, to Pete, and to Ken, anyone else who's been on camera. Thanks a lot today. Uh, it's been incredible uh, lunch as well at the at Gianni's Tavern. Uh, we'll put all the details below. But uh, yeah, if you're into your cars and you come to Cy Cyprus, and uh, if you like, uh, getting involved um, it, it's a fantastic club we've had a lovely day so thanks so much for watching um, check out the owner stories that we've done today as well and I'll see you for the next one cheers <laughs>